Good evening. My name is Ava Kamal and host of this evening's proceedings where we celebrate our city day and commemorate our civic awards ceremony. This year, we celebrate 107 years of the restoration of the municipal rights of the citizens of Port of Spain. This year's theme, aptly titled, Unity, Coming Through Together, serves to inspire us all that we have certainly come through a year under the COVID-19 pandemic and we continue to remain resilient as we stand together and forge forward to a hopeful future. At this evening's proceedings, I would like us to welcome His Worship the Mayor, Alderman Joel Martinez. And now, we'll hear from our line minister, Senator the Honorable Kazem Hussein, who will give tribute to the city of Port of Spain and the Port of Spain City Corporation on behalf of the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government. On this milestone occasion, as our capital city celebrates 107 years, I would like to congratulate all the unique, culturally diverse and energetic people who continue to bolster the spirit of love, harmony and volunteerism, which is indelibly woven into the fabric of the wonderful city of Port of Spain. As Minister of Rural Development and Local Government, I consider myself to be the first servant of the people, and I am proud to be part of the continuous development of our beautiful capital city. The city of Port of Spain is a shining example of service, passion, and community spirit. When I think about our capital city, the tall buildings, the extensive history, and vibrant beauty, comes first to my mind. I must say that the theme of unity coming through together is such an appropriate theme for this occasion as Port of Spain is blooming epicenter of our beautiful country. It is a place bustling with diverse people, food and places. It truly captures the diversity that echoes throughout our nation as well as the multi-dimensional history and culture that seeps through the very soil that we walk on. As we all know, the city of Port of Spain has been the home of the greatest show on earth for countless years now. Our world-renowned carnival, year after year, people from all over the world come together with our citizens to partake in our celebration. Plus, any person who visits our country knows they have to make a stop in Port of Spain to enjoy all it has to offer. To soak up the friendliness of our people, the tastiness of our different food, and to marvel at the architecture. The city brings people together, and while we may not be able to be together the way we want right now, I still see unity in the way we are fighting this global pandemic. As Port of Spain continues to blossom and maintains its impeccable status as our welcoming city, known for its rich culture and history, its landscape, its varied people, and its commitment to service, I extend warm congratulations to His Worship the Mayor, members of council, the administrative arm, and all the citizens on this 107th City Day commemoration. Happy 107 years, Port of Spain, from the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government, as well as myself. May we look forward to seeing the comforting and familiar hustle and bustle of this lively city once again after we overcome this pandemic. May God bless the city of Port of Spain. Thank you so much, Minister Hussein, for that lovely and fitting tribute to the city of Port of Spain. And at this time, I welcome you stateside where we will receive the invocation for this evening's proceedings from Father Gregory Augustine. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. 
Then one of the synagogue officials came up, Jairus by name, fell at the feet of Jesus and pleaded with him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is desperately sick. Do come and lay your hands on her. Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed. While they were speaking, some people arrived from the house of the synagogue official, saying, Your daughter is dead. Why put the master through any further trouble? But Jesus overheard these remarks of theirs and said it to the official, Do not be afraid, only have faith. And he allowed no one to go in except Peter and James and John. So they came to the official's house, and Jesus noticed all the commotion, with people weeping and wailing unrestrainedly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and crying? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. So he turned them all out, and taking with him the child's father and mother and his companions, he went into the place where the child lay. And taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I tell you to get up. And the little girl got up at once and began to walk about, for she was 12 years old. And so we pray today, in keeping with the theme of this year's City Day, unity coming through together, Jesus took with him his companions and the mother and father of the child. He surrounded himself with people who were about life and about hope and dispelled those naysayers, those negative voices, those people who made a commotion. And so we pray today that all of us may recognize that we must surround ourselves with those who are positive, those who are about life, about salvation, about hope, about breathing new life into our society and our world. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father Augustine, for those very timely and admonishing words. And we will, at this time, hear from our CEO, Chief Executive Officer, Mrs. Annette Stapleton Seaforth. His Worship the Mayor, Alderman Joel Martinez, members of council, members of staff, awardees, Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Today, I welcome you as we celebrate the 107th anniversary of the restoration of, of municipal rights to the city of Port of Spain under the theme, Unity Coming True Together. I wish to thank all employees for their dedicated service and commitment throughout the pandemic, which has affected mankind globally. You are the supporting pillar of this organization. You have withstood the tide, despite the challenges of adapting to the new normal, which involved staff rotation, providing the essential services, and adhering to the COVID-19 guidelines. Members of staff and the council embraced the technology, utilizing the virtual network to conduct the business of the corporation and to ensure continuity in the workplace. Over the past 16 months, it has not been business as usual. Due to the continuous lockdowns and state of emergency restrictions, most of the development works planned by the corporation have not been implemented. However, while there are systems to be improved through all the various departments, we were able to get the day-to-day -day activities done and ensure that the city was cleaned and maintained. The Port of Spain Corporation has not been spared the issues relating to the pandemic. During this time, we lost one of our valuable employees from the Public Health Department. Other employees have lost loved ones and friends and families have been affected. 
The corporation has recently completed a successful vaccination program for members of staff, which was spearheaded by the Lion Ministry, the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government, and the Public Health Department. Members of Council approved the required funding and ensured that employees were equipped with the necessary tools and health and safety equipment to enable the execution of their duties. With safety as the utmost priority, both administration and members of the Municipal Police Department have worked tirelessly to ensure that the employees and members of the public follow the three Ws. Wear your mask, wash your hands, watch your distance. We look forward to the next year for continued planning, dialogue, and a positive transition of the city. Once again, I thank all employees for implementing the policies set out by the council. Continue to strive to the best, and most importantly, stay safe. Thank you, Madam CEO. We will now hear from our mayor, none other than His Worship, Alderman Joel Martinez, who will bring greetings on behalf of Port of Spain City Corporation and members of council. Please recognize our mayor this time. Thank you very much, Chairman of this evening's proceedings, Councillor Abba Kamau, members of council of the Port of Spain Corporation, Mrs. Annette Stapleton Seafort, Chief Executive Officer of the Port of Spain Corporation, members of administrative staff, our outstanding civic and mayoral awardees, members of the media, members of the viewing and listening audience, good afternoon. For the past 15 months, we have been dealing with an unseen enemy and it has forced us to think differently, to operate digitally. And this is what we are doing this afternoon. The one difference that I think stood out for us as Trinbagodians was simply that we missed people. As mentioned at the beginning of my second term in 2019, our goal as a council was to bring people back into this capital city. But COVID-19 had alternative plans. It was truly a magnificent experience, however, to see how much of our citizens, both corporate and private, stepped in to assist each other at this time. We also saw how many of our regional and international partners were willing to come to our assistance since, from early on, we all recognized the need for teamwork in defeating our common unseen enemy. This sense of community spurred on the theme for City Week this year entitled Unity Coming Through Together. City Week is a reminder that Port of Spain's history is rich and full of victories after turmoil. This year, I believe it is necessary to highlight that our victories were encouraged by the actions of our people, our citizens. In the early 1900s, it was an association of citizens who petitioned for a council to be re-established after it was abolished by the Governor General. Our citizens and various leaders pushed back against that system until municipal rights were restored by proclamation on June the 26th, 1914. This meant that citizens could once more participate in electing members of council and it was therefore an act of unity that brought us through that time. And similar acts of unity will bring us through this one. 
As stated before, the past year, while challenging, has been a true testament to the success which partnership can bring and the generosity of our citizens, our corporate colleagues, our government, and our regional and international partners was instrumental in helping us cope with the effects of a pandemic. While it is through the distribution of food hampers and care packages by businesses and NGOs, or even through medi medical equipment, masks, and vaccines gifted by ambassadors and high commissioners working on behalf of our countries, the capital city has benefited from unity through partnerships, and we continue to benefit today. It is therefore clear that uniting for a common purpose is the only way to come through together. For our recovery and to achieve our goals of truly becoming a revitalized city. Looking forward, our city's future will look and feel differently, but with a renewed sense of hope and resilience to rebuild, we will press forward. There is no time greater than the present to thank those who have kept us sustained. Firstly, I wish to thank our Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, and all of government ministers for their continued guidance and support of our capital city. To the members of Parliament for Port of Spain, the Honorable Stuart Young and the Honorable Keith Scotland, who have both maintained a strong, vibrant relationship with the Council, which we wish to thank you for. For all the essential servicemen and women, as well as their support staff, I say a special thank you for your patience, commitment, and dedication to keep Port of Spain going through this pandemic. I further wish to thank all my fellow members of Council. We have been diligent on the field, and I am eternally grateful for the selflessness and passionate service of our capital city. Additionally, I wish to sincerely thank to the Council Chief Executive Officer and the administrative staff, without whose support this city will not be serviced. To the TTPS and the Municipal City Police, many thanks for keeping our city safe and secure. To the members of the Diplomatic Corps, our corporate citizens, the various NGOs, thank you for extending your generous hand to sustain the public health of our Port of Spain. To the Good Samaritans, and to all of you, our dear citizens of this great and beautiful capital city, I want to say thank you for creating a space we adore and with each day that passes. On behalf of the Council of the Port of Spain Corporation, I wish to extend warmest greetings for City Day 2021. Let us continue on together, since only through unity we will come through together as one body, one city, one nation. I thank you. Thank you very much, Your Worship. And that takes us to the very first categories of our Civic Awards distribution. And uh, I will invite my colleague, Mr. Dennis Bristol, to assist in this distribution. Our first awardee, or rather organization, professional group, we as a council chose to recognize the Student Support Services Division, which was established in 2004 
to deliver an array of psychosocial, educational, and behavioral services for students. The division helps to provide an environment which supports the students' healthy development, enabling them to become responsible and productive citizens. This includes specialized services for children with moderate and severe special educational needs, behavioral issues, clinical issues, and career guidance. During this COVID-19 pandemic, these services have proven to be of an immense benefit to our students providing them with the appropriate intervention to assist in overcoming obstacles to learning. Additionally, the division collaborates with the ministries of health, social development, national security, as well as the children's authority to identify and treat with situations of abuse, neglect, or exploitation, which are detected among children in the education system. On behalf of the his Worship the Mayor and the Council of the Port of Spain City Corporation, we congratulate the Student Support Division for its sterling contribution to the education of our children and by extension our capital city. And to receive this award on behalf of the Student Support Services Division is Mrs. Letitia Rodriguez Keeper. That brings us to our second recipient. And we chose to recognize our teaching fraternity as we know how they have certainly stepped up to the plate in what we now have coined the new normal. And so we know that our nation's teachers have had to innovate in the way that they have been able to facilitate our students. And so we wanted to recognize all of the wonderful teachers of Trinidad and Tobago. And in particular, of course, we recognize our teachers of our city schools. To receive on behalf of the teaching fraternity, we have the Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association tutor. The Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association was formed in 1979 and was officially recognized as the representative for educators in 1981. From its inception, the association has pushed for training and development opportunities for teachers and recognizing those who have given outstanding service to their school and their community. For over one year, the teaching environment has had a sudden adjustment from physical to virtual. The teaching fraternity has therefore had to embrace new rules and support this style of learning. Despite the many challenges faced, however, Tutor has encouraged teachers to adapt while it has tirelessly advocated for the health and safety of educators and students during this pandemic. According to a member of Tutor, educators are committed and they go beyond the call of duty to make sure that their students can contribute to the society in a positive way. These sentiments Tutor says, are echoed by most teachers whose sacrifices deserve to be acknowledged and cherished. And for this, we congratulate our teaching service of Trinidad and Tobago as represented by Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association and their sterling contribution to the city of Port of Spain. And to receive on behalf of tutor and the teaching fraternity by extension, we have the president in Mrs. Antonia De Freitas. Thank you, President DeFreitas. Moving right along, we have the, uh, the opportunity to recognize the sterling contribution of yet another 
dedicated and committed profession that would have stood on the front lines and continue to stand on the front lines in the face of this pandemic. And so we have chosen to recognize our nurses. The Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association was founded in 1930 as an independent, non-political, non-governmental national association. Its primary goal is to represent its members and be the voice of the profession through personal and professional development, education, representation, and bargaining. The association confines its interests and concerns primarily to matters related to health, nursing, midwifery, and trade union issues. During the COVID-19 pandemic, nurses were lauded for their contribution to the nation as essential workers in the fight against this deadly virus. To upbuild its members, the association focused heavily on upholding its vision, which states improving healthcare from within Nurses empowering nurses. And this evening, we congratulate the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association for its sterling contribution to the capital city. And here to receive is President Edie Stewart. At this time, we will receive greetings from one of our city representatives in the constituency hailing from Port of Spain North, St. Anne's West, none other than the Honorable Member of Parliament, Stuart Young. It is with pride and pleasure that I bring these greetings to the city of Port of Spain as you celebrate 107 years of being the city of Port of Spain. You are our country's capital. You've played an important part in our history. You continue to play an important part in our present and you will do so as we go forward in the future. Congratulations, Port of Spain. I am proud to serve as the Member of Parliament for Port of Spain North, St. Anne's West for the last six years and to be a part of this great city's history as you celebrate 107 years, it is fitting of me to thank all of our past mayors, deputy mayors, council men and women, all the men and women, staff members of the Port of Spain City Corporation, continue serving with pride and making everyone appreciate the city of Port of Spain. There is a lot of history in Port of Spain, a lot of history that we must celebrate and that we acknowledge here after these 107 years. I would just like to thank all of the persons who've contributed to making it one of the leading cities in the Western Hemisphere and in this COVID-19 pandemic. To thank all of our healthcare workers, our sanitation workers, our policemen and women, all of our workers at the Port of Spain City Corporation, all of our teachers, all of our students who have held it together for the past year. For all of those who live, travel to, work in Port of Spain, continue to carry us forward for yet another 107 years. Congratulations, Port of Spain. It's a great pleasure to be part of your history and to celebrate this momentous occasion. Well done. Thank you, Minister Young. At this time, we move into the second category of our Civic Awards ceremony, where we recognize three of our oldest educational institutions within the city of Port of Spain. And to hand these awards, I ask the assistance of our alderman, Wade Coker. Our very first institution, we recognize Fatima College, which was founded in January 1945 
by the Holy Ghost Fathers who were responding to the need for more secondary school places in the country. Although the college had humble beginnings in the St. Teresa's churchyard, it has made significant strides as a leading educational institution for academia, sports, and the arts. Fatima College is also revered as a leader of technology in education. It was one of the first to introduce a televised school community program, as well as the first to operate smart boards in the classroom. In 2020, it celebrated its 75th anniversary. The college has prided itself as well, a rounded institution born out of belief in the college's motto, by striving we conquer. Its alumni includes former West Indies cricketer and world record holder, Brian Lara, former Central Bank Governor, Jawala Rambaran, and former Olympic sprinter, Atta Bolden. Of the school, its principal, Father Gregory Augustine says, we have a high caliber of teachers who sculpt the minds of our students and produce well-rounded, emotionally sound men who can confidently lead our nation tomorrow. And we take this opportunity at this time to congratulate Fatima College for its sterling contribution to the capital city. Good afternoon, everyone. I am indeed humbled and honored to receive this honor on behalf of the college. But I also wish to state that we are one among many. And simply put, uh, this pandemic has allowed us as educators to share resources and to share ideas. And so this afternoon, I wish to acknowledge my colleagues in education, particularly in the Port of Spain and environs area. Uh, there are three secondary schools on Mucarapo Road, Mucarapo East, Mucarapo West, both led by Fatima Old Boys. And this experience has allowed us to share even more. In the words of the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, I recognize that we are merely servants, and what we are doing is our duty. Our duty is to serve and to ensure excellence. May that service bring life to our city and to our country. I thank you. Thank you, Father Augustine. Congratulations on your 75th anniversary again. We move right along. We recognize Bishop's Anstey High School, celebrating 100 years of revolutionary women. I like that. Was the theme introduced by the Bishop's Anstey High School in celebration of its January 13th, 2021 anniversary. In 1921, Bishop Arthur Henry Anstey founded the school for girls based on several core principles, which included if affording girls the same educational opportunities as boys. He then vowed that girls from all social classes and backgrounds should be allowed access to quality education. To Bishop Anstey, girls of all religious persuasions should be welcomed and encouraged to excel academically in accordance with the Anglican doctrine, which advocated exposure to quality education for all. A century later, the school boasts of an elite alumni, including the country's first female president, Her Excellency, 
Paula May Weeks, Minister of Planning and Development, the Honorable Camille Robinson Regis, and distinguished lawyer and wife of our Prime Minister, Mrs. Sharon Clark Rowley. Of the school, its principal, Mrs. Ingrid Govaya says, the theme revolutionary woman is such a true reflection of us, for we are indeed evolutionary women. We have evolved with time and we will continue to evolve. This is necessary for our existence as we move forward into the next 100 years. Congratulations to Bishops Anstey High School for its sterling contribution to the capital city. And this evening, one of our very own would be accepting on their behalf alumni herself, Mrs. Celeste Augustine. We move right along to, we're getting some creme de la creme here. So we are going up in years. We went from 75 years celebrated by Fatima College, 100 years celebrated by Bishops Anstey High, and our final educational institution this evening, celebrating a magnanimous 150 years in existence, none other than Queen's Royal College. <laughs> Queen's Royal College was inaugurated in June 1870, the 3rd of June to be precise, under the auspices of the Governor General after he introduced a primary schooling ordinance in 1851. With just 34 students, it became the first public secondary school in Trinidad. After correspondence from the Secretary of the State of the Crown Colonies, the school was given its name by Her Majesty the Queen as a symbol of her pleasure in the institution. Last year, Queen's Royal College celebrated 150 years of existence. The college has been known to contribute significantly to the development of our country, even before it was an independent nation. Its alumni includes quite a few firsts for Trinidad and Tobago, including its first prime minister, Dr. Eric Eustace Williams, its first leader of the opposition, Dr. Rudrinath Capaldeo, and its first Chief Justice, Sir Hugh Wooding. Present Principal of Queen's Royal College, Mr. David Simon said, as a leading educational institution, Queen's Royal College must remain committed to producing resilient, critical thinking team players who will not only accommodate change, but initiate change. And for this reason, we celebrate together with this august institution, Queen's Royal College, for its sterling contribution to the capital city of Port of Spain. And we have Principal David Simon, who will be collecting on their behalf. We'd like to ask our Deputy Mayor, Helen Morian, to also join in presenting this plaque as he is also a proud alumni. A very special good afternoon to all. All protocols observed. If indeed we needed unity, it is now. In the face of the pandemic, we need our people and our institutions now even more than ever. Queen's Royal College is one of those institutions that has been able to provide over the years numerous individuals who have been able to take this country to newer levels and to achieve in every facet of our lives. This institution has provided us with world-class performers in every area that we can think of. From our very first Prime Minister, Dr. Eric Williams, to our first leader of the opposition, Dr. Rujanat Kapildo, 
and our first Nobel laureate, Svedia Naipaul. This institution has been part of the process of allowing us as a people to pull through together. And really, I can continue to name prominent individuals from this institution, but I'm reminded that our curfew begins at 7 p.m. As an institution, the college is a fixture in our capital city and has always been since its inception, taking up residence in its present location for just over 150 years now. We certainly hope to be able to continue to aid in the development of our capital city and our country as we work our way to another century and a half. Allow me the opportunity to thank the city of Port of Spain and Alderman Joel Martinez, his worship the mayor, for this award. It is indeed with a great deal of humility that I accept this award on behalf of all the great royalians that would have passed through the halls of this illustrious and world-renowned institution. As a royalian myself, this is indeed an honor, and I say thank you from the bottom of my heart as I graciously accept it on behalf of all royalians. However, before I leave the lectern this evening, allow me, on behalf of Queen's Royal College, to accept all and to praise all of the other awardees for their sterling contribution to our national development. It is not very often that I feel very old, but certainly today, as I stand in front of you accepting on behalf of Queen's Royal College, I recognize that we are the grandfather of all institutions. Therefore, we will set the pace and the example for others to follow. As I humbly accept this award, I say, Magna Mess QRC. Magna Mess QRC. At this time, we go right into our second greeting of the evening for our final representative of the Port of Spain area, and in that we have a greeting from none other than our Port of Spain South representative, Honorable Member of Parliament, Keith Scotland. City of Port of Spain, you celebrate 107 years in existence. Congratulations. I take this opportunity to honor and to pay homage to three institutions in the city of Port of Spain. Queen's Royal College, you have existed for 150 years. What an achievement. You have produced minds that have touched lives both locally and internationally. Intellectuals, sportsmen, world renowned. Congratulations. Bishops Anstey, what an institution. You have produced persons who are now known not just to Trinidad and Tobago, but to the world at large. Congratulations. Fatima College, an institution close to my heart. Where would I be today without you? Along with several others. I say to you, congratulations. City of Port of Spain and institutions that I've mentioned continue to strive for excellence, continue to make a difference in the young, impressionable minds who are entrusted in your care in this very trying times. Strive on for another 107 years. Congratulations. Thank you, MP Scotland. And now to the mayoral awards of this evening. And for this, I ask our mayor, Alderman Joel Martinez, his worship, 
to join me on stage as we distribute these awards. Our first mayoral awardee is an educator who has taught for the past three decades. Mrs. Dominique Salandi Brown has proudly served as a primary school teacher. Throughout her career, she has had the privilege of teaching at all levels of the primary school system. However, she most enjoys laying the foundation that children at the early stages can benefit from. During the pandemic, Mrs. Salandi Brown has adapted with great skill to the demands of teaching in such a time. From early on, she made a decision to find creative ways to treat with the new territory of the online learning in the public school system. To keep her very young students engaged, she has meticulously planned and coordinated fun activities within the given syllabus. Recognizing the need for more to be done, she enlisted assistance to set up internet access for some students, and she has even gone as far as utilizing her own funds to assist students in need. Mrs. Salandi Brown has truly gone beyond the call of duty to engage the help of the business community to further assist children in need. The love and care in molding her students makes Mrs. Salandi Brown an unsung hero who is adored by the parents and students she assists daily. Congratulations to Mrs. Dominic Salandi Brown on behalf of His Worship the Mayor and members of council for your outstanding contribution towards the development of youth in the sphere of education. Mrs. Salandi Brown hails from Sacred Heart Schools. Good afternoon, everyone. All protocols observed. Today, I want to thank the city of Port of Spain for this recognition. I especially want to extend a heartfelt thanks to His Worship, Alderman the Mayor, Joel Martinez, and the Council of Port of Spain Corporation for making this recognition tangible through this award. This award is not only about the recognition of an individual, but also the recognition of one member of a community of dedicated servant leaders in the schools of the city of Port of Spain. Every single day, teachers are working miracles in their classrooms. The COVID-19 pandemic caused many of us to embrace technology and use innovative methods to educate our students. We had to show our students and their families we can be resilient and forge ahead in this devastating shift in our normal. This award also honors the efforts of my fellow colleagues who selflessly adapted to our change rules and pressed on. As the motto of my school says, only the best is good enough. I am privileged to be a part of leading and facilitating the future community of Port of Spain. We often refer to the adage that it takes a village to raise a, to raise a child or children. Today, I substitute village with city. Each person that works or resides in our city of Port of Spain is on team teach, and at every moment is responsible for who our future leaders will become. As a teacher, I see the product of my work every single day through my little charges. I know that I am making the city and the world a better place through them. So through the celebration of City Day, the advocacy of these awards of recognition for the contributions of persons like me, my fellow awardees, it is gratifying and motivating. 
I am truly honored to be recognized with the philosophy that is embodied in this award. I thank you. Congratulations again to you, Mrs. Salandi Brown. As the last of the Holy Ghost Father in academia, Father Gregory Augustine is a proud past pupil of Fatima College, the school which he leads as principal. Last year, the school celebrated its 75th anniversary and for the past 12 years, Father Augustine has served at its helm. He began his career as a teacher of Fatima College in 1992, imparting his knowledge of history and religion. He still teaches religion as this enables him to connect more with his charges. Coming from a teaching family, Father Augustine has always been drawn to teaching as his parents were also educators. He also grew up in a very Catholic family and between his exposure to Fatima and teachings at home, he got his vocation to join the priesthood. Having grown up in the college in 1970s, he was very aware of the strong community atmosphere of the college. He has been praised for his work to restore several parts of the school, as well as changing the lives of many of his students. This evening, we join His Worship the Mayor as members of council city of the Port of Spain City Corporation in giving congratulations to Father Gregory Augustine for his outstanding contribution towards the development of youth in the sphere of education. He is also the outgoing principal as he will be retiring soon. So I have spoken already, but I simply wish to say as an educator that our commitment as teachers, and I speak on behalf of the fraternity, that parents need not be afraid, that teachers know what our commitment is, and we will ensure that your children are secure for the future and particularly for the exam coming next week, the SEA, we are all banding together to ensure that all will be well. I thank you. Thank you, Father Augustine, for those words of encouragement. And so our final awardee of this evening's Civic Awards Ceremony has arrived. Mr. Dominic Kalipasad has served the country in the news media for 42 years in various capacities from news reporter to head of news. Even after he retired in September 2016, he continued to lend his accumulated knowledge and skills to the media industry and is now the longest serving on-air broadcast journalist across various communication platforms. Mr. Kalipasad started his career in 1974 as a reporter at Trinidad and Tobago Television for 15 years, where he was the principal television news anchor in the country. His persuasive interviews ranged from prime ministers and politicians to international celebrities and village leaders. Mr. Kalpasad gained a reputation in the public for his no-nonsense but fair reportage. In the industry, he was reputed for his sense of integrity and organizational and managerial skills. During his journalism career, Mr. Kalpasad led teams that broke many important works of journalism, which influenced government decisions. He also confronted and overcame several challenges. Furthermore, Mr. Kalpasad laid his life on the line during the attempted coup d'etat of 2011.
of 1990 as one of the hostages at TTT and with armed insurgents around him. He kept notes for possible future writing about the story of which he became a part. He also remained calm and professional while under duress as he went on air to keep the nation informed. When an offer was made for him to exchange his freedom for food for those trapped at TTT, he refused the offer unless all the hostages were freed. In his retirement, Mr. Kalipasad continues to make a contribution to the media industry. He has also launched a de facto career as an amateur historian on the digital platform Instagram. Congratulations are befitting of one of our trailblazers in the media industry. For in Mr. Kalpasad, we have found an outstanding serviceman in the media. Sterling contributions certainly he has made in the development of broadcast journalism and outstanding gallantry in reporting historic events in our capital city. We welcome you, Mr. Kalipasad. Your Worship, the Mayor, Councillors, the CEO and members of the administrative staff, and fellow awardees. I have to say, this really comes as a surprise. Um, having only been notified a few days ago, but certainly it's been the furthest thing from my mind in the 40 plus years I've been in journalism, and in which I only strive to be the best that I could. But I am told that the award is for contribution to the development of Port of Spain, and that's a total order. You know, Port of Spain has been the center of journalism for 222 years. Since 1799, two years after the British conquest of Trinidad, 1799, when the first newspaper in the English language was published, the Trinidad Weekly Courant. Over the years, there has been a host of newspapers, some even published in French, the Catholic News, founded in 1892, remains the country's oldest existing newspaper. And the Trinidad Guardian, first published in 1917, remains the longest running daily newspaper. The Trinidad Express, the oldest daily which started, the second oldest daily which started in 67, was the first that began with black ownership, which did not express the views of the colonial establishment. And then, of course, there's the broadcast media with Radio Trinidad, which began in 1947, TTT that went on the air in 1962, and the opening up of the airwaves in 1986. Perhaps it is they that deserve the recognition for serving the cities and the nation's information needs. My career has seen me in leadership and management roles in all the legacy media, press, radio, television. Apart from reporting on events and holding those in authority to account, part of my self-defined mission has been to celebrate the uncelebrated, to engender a sense of self-worth among us. After all, the best journalists tell the best stories of the people, the beautiful, the painful, the historic, and even the bizarre. We may not have been 100% successful, but the effort is unending. I regard this award as a salute to all those who stand strong and to those deserving of opportunities for training to be better. When I was a child, I loved sitting at my mother's feet, listening to her share stories of the past. We often talked about where we came from in order to continue to build on where we need to go. You know nothing about your life if you don't know your history, is what she meant. The history of Port of Spain is the history of Trinidad. 
And in my retirement, my mother's wisdom in mind, I've been attempting to curate it in my simple, perhaps amateurish way, to rekindle the interest of especially the younger generations. In this age of information technology, we can all shine a spotlight on our stories and inspire our people, show our greatness and our possibilities. Thank you, Your Worship, Mayor Martinez, and the Port of Spain City Corporation for this gesture. Thank you and congratulations to all of our awardees of this evening's Civic Award proceedings. It is indeed our pleasure that we had the opportunity to be able to commemorate our City Day by recognizing the outstanding contributions of professions, institutions, and individuals to our capital city. At this time, I would like to take the opportunity to thank His Worship the Mayor, members of council, for all of the support and all of the camaraderie that we have shared in coming through this past year, as we know that it was challenging. It is indeed challenging, but we have stood the test and we continue to stand resilient as we continue to ask our citizens to remain resilient and to continue to fight against this war of this current COVID pandemic. I would want to remind you of our theme again, which is unity coming through together. As we band together, not just as family, but as friends, as neighbors, and good citizens that we would be our brother's keeper in whatever way that we have the ability to, to ensure that we do truly come through together and no one is left behind. I implore you to observe all of our public health ordinances and protocols that have been put in place to ensure our health and safety as we forge through this process and this brings us to the end of this evening's proceedings. I want to thank you, thank members of the media, thank our viewing and listening public for your attention at this time as we bid you farewell and good evening. Thank you. <laughs>